Today, I'd like to speak about buttons. How, where, and why. How is how the buttons are sewn on, of course, where the buttons are positioned, and why they're positioned where they are. For instance, we have a single button sport jacket here. And the buttons that we saw on at the front is strategically placed in the waist. And it's placed on the natural waist. The natural waist is actually the, exactly the same position as the elbow. So you'll find the elbow line and the button on the waist is in the perfect position. And that gives you a much better balance to enhance the figure, to give the illusion on occasions of a smaller waist. And of course, in planning, when you lay your patterns on a, on a Czech sports jacket, for instance, in planning the position of your buttons. This start in particular is very symmetrical design. But here I've introduced the outside ticket pocket on the left side as well as on the right side. And that is to make it not only make it a little bit different, but make it interesting. What we've done here, instead of having the button position in the middle of the check, what we've got is two pink checks below the button position and two pink checks above the button position. So the idea is to create balance. Also, we have the right neck on the button and the neck on the button is so that when the button is functional, it's buttoned up, you do not gape at the buttonhole. Also, we have under the lapel and under the collar, we've got buttons. On a cold day, for, for instance, you can actually draw in your lapel and button up like this. And on the collar, we can do the same. Inside, we've got, or under the collar, we've got this beautiful multicolored cross stitches which on occasions will be seen on a, on a cold day, for instance, you can see your buttons under the collar. We've got a pink one here. We've got a different color button here to coordinate with the overall colors. And we have buttons on the cuff, all functional and different colors here to show. But the important thing is the neck on the button. The button has to be sewn with the neck to give it durability, to ensure that the buttonholes remain closed and only the keyhole or the eye of the buttonhole is occupied, as well as the durability is the strength in the button. As long as there's sway, then the button is actually sewn on stronger. So as we button this back up, you can see the thickness of where the button is sewn, you can actually see the buttonholes remain closed. Now, let me show you how I attached the button. So what we will be doing here is actually sewing a button with the shank. The thickness that we have here, we'll start with approximately quarter of an inch or five millimeters. By the time we finished, it will actually be reduced to just about one eighth of an inch. In preparation to sew on a button, you need a thread. You need a very strong thread, but if you don't have a strong thread, I would suggest you use just uh, the Coats machine thread. Now, the Coats machine thread is quite strong. You need approximately six inches to sew on the button. So I'm um, at four cords, four layers. So what I shall be doing here is measuring about 18 inches uh, four times, so that is 72 inches. So that's doubled, tripled, quadruple, just to be sure that I've got enough thread. The stronger thread is usually a, a nylon thread, but I'm avoiding using a nylon thread in this instance. I'm using a cotton because most of you, I think, would have a cotton thread for your machine. So double layer. You would need, of course, a needle with a, a large enough eye so that when you thread the needle, you won't have a, an issue of struggling. Here you can see we've got two layers of cotton threading 
the needle. So you need, you need thread, of course, you need needle, and you need wax, beeswax. So thread the needle two layers, and so when you pull those two layers together, you'll end up with what we call four cord. No more than four cord because it's going to be much too thick. So you can sew the button several times. And here I've got a beeswax, which you can get at any tailoring and trimming suppliers. Just wax that properly for about three or four times. Make sure there's enough wax to actually bond the bits of thread that come together. You see that's well bonded. But to give it even more strength, we actually curl the thread. So if you just stick the needle down like that, and you curl the thread on one side. If we just curl that, you can just hold on to the needle on one hand. And incidentally, if you're making a buttonhole and you don't have gimp, you do use something similar, but instead of four cords, I'll have six cords because I need to keep it a little bit thicker. So this is how you make a gimp as well. You curl it, you curl it as much as you possibly can, and then give it a nice press. Place the iron on it, and the iron is, is hot, and then just simply pulling the thread through. Having done it once, twice, perhaps a third time, just to make sure that that wax is really properly melted. So here you can see, I've left the wax on this pad here, and you can see quite clearly how and where the wax have actually stained the cloth. Now that's okay with this pad, so that's, that's not a problem. Now some tailors actually wipe the wax away, and I don't think that's enough. It needs to be pressed. You can see how the cloth is stained here. You don't want that to happen on, on your jacket. Uh, this is a tweed, it won't show that much, but in most cloths, plain cloths, it would actually show. Now I'm gonna sew the button on. I've already marked the button position. We got our button here. Now this is this is a button with four holes. Most buttons they've got four holes. You've got only one supplier does a two-hole horn button. We've got four holes. And usually it's my thing that I've got a check jacket, multicolored check. I'm going to sew the buttons with a cross. Most times I actually sew with a parallel line because some Customers, depending on their religion, believe it or not, they don't like a cross on their button. They prefer parallel lines on the button. So I would recommend you sew your buttons on parallel as a standard. And for exceptional cases, you sew with a cross. First of all, I don't usually put a, a knot in the thread, but I hide the ends in between the layers. So you can't see anything on this side or there but in between, the thread will be hidden. And just to create a foundation, I just sew through once, so I've got that foundation. Tuck the needle into the hole and onto the opposite side, like this. Here, the distance apart that you've got the holes is the distance apart you're actually going to be sticking the needle through. And I prefer to sew all the way through because in the middle of the facing and the outside, I've got a layer of body canvas. And I want to have a very strong button. You know, I said before, strength and sway are important. So the sway is the movement of the shank. And here the strength is that sticking the needle in the same width, but as we stick that needle in, I'm actually going to be sticking it on an angle. And the reason for an angle is that I want to show less of the thread on the inside. If you have your fingers like this and you just gauge, you, you could see that's about five millimeters, and that's the shank, or a quarter of an inch, that's the shank I'm going to use. So we've got that looseness. And of course, when I stick the needle in the second time round, here, I'm just gonna go about a millimeter away, but then tucking the needle on an angle. And if you see, even though I'm just about a millimeter or less than an eighth of an inch, about a sixteenth of an inch 
away from when I pulled the needle. Here at the inside, I'm actually quite a, a long distance away from the previous where I've tucked the needle in previously. So I've tucked the needle in on an angle and getting on to the other hole. And now I'll place my index finger underneath to maintain the shank and go right across and do the same thing again. So now you can see here, I've got a cross where I'm actually sewing. If you look here, you'll see a, a cross where the first stitch and then the second stitch, you've got four separate layers there. And now I'm pulling there. And this is where the shank starts at just about a quarter of an inch. When it's finished, it's actually going to be reduced. And I'll show you how, how that happens. So again, I keep my finger on underneath. And again, I go with just a, a sixteenth of an inch away and on an angle onto the first hole. So now we're crossing over onto the first hole and onto the second hole again on an angle. So you can see it, you can see clearly where the needle comes from one direction and goes to the opposite direction. And of course, just remember to keep your fingers in to maintain the shank because we want to keep all layers of thread at the same length. Same again, another eighth of an inch or a sixteenth onto the third hole that we used. And if you prepare well uh, your thread, all you need to do is go through two twice on each hole. So here I am, I've gone all the way through twice on each hole. Now the third stitch, so we count those as two stitches, is actually from the opposite direction back on but not into the buttonhole. And you just hold on to the button there, try and ideally have the cross in the same direction as the checks on your jacket, and you curl around. Now curl around, I'm actually pulling this really, really tightly. And that is what actually reduces the uh, height of the shank. Now we'll find, and then you tuck the needle all the way through, you would find that extra, that, that width of shank that you've got, I mean, this button's got a lot of sway, that width of shank that you've got actually would be enough to accommodate the thickness of the buttonhole side. And when the button is buttoned, you won't get the buttonhole gaping. Now that we've done that, in an effort to not to have too much of the thread showing, again, approximately a sixteenth of an inch, you go away from where you started sewing. So you've got the end of the thread hidden away in between and you can just give yourself a second chance to ensure that that thread doesn't pull out. So I avoid using knots, but what I want is neatness on both inside and outside. I need strength and I need a certain amount of sway. As long as this button can move, it'll stay there stronger. Now just to finish off, I can button, button the jacket, you can see. When this button is done up, the, the buttonhole is not gaping, it actually stays closed. You've got a shank accommodated with the keyhole on the button, and there you have it, nice and flat. And that's how we sew on a button on a bespoke jacket. And how we sew the buttons on is very important, so that it would last as long as the garment lasts. There's no excuses why a button should fall out.